Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, legendary voiceover coach and actor, Joe Lesh. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, fans, friends, family? I know you guys are all listening. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Rich Redmond Show, coming to you from Nippers Corner, America, Brantioch, Tennessee. And Jim, my co-producer, my co-host, my good pal, I'm really yeah. excited about our next guest. I know you are, too. Yeah. Because it's right in your lane. What's this show about, though? This show, <laughs> thank you so much for reminding me, is about the pursuit of music motivation and success and creativity and I am interviewing musicians, producers, songwriters, comedians, authors, thought leaders and voice actors and today our guest is Mr. Joe Lesh. Hey. There he is right there. Hey. <laughs> there Hi, he is. <laughs> he traveled a long way to get here. Hey, Jim. Yeah, Joe, now Joe is an award-winning voice actor mm -hmm. and teacher. He's voiced over 500 audio books and done over dozens of national commercials and and he teaches a lot of people and shapes the future for the for the you keep the future of voice acting alive <laughs> and i learned the hard way you're a musician i didn't know that i, I thought you were yes. a full time and you so you play the guitar and you're right. in a band you're right that's incredible you're right. you are yeah and <laughs> you live 10 houses away from me that's right now I, this is the first time we've met yeah well, because the fun, down the street. But, but I have heard about you for years because, um, you know, everyone knows that the Jim also being a drummer, he also makes his living doing voice acting. So, you know, I know you guys are friends, but then I would hear about you from our friend Alan Dysert, who has, yeah. you know, acting is it actor school USA or uh, that's it's it, the actor school in yeah. Nashville. And he was my first, uh, he was my first acting coach, such a sweet, gentle soul. And he would always send emails and remind me, hey, Joe Lesh is coming in to teach a two-day class. Cool. Alan is a dear, dear friend. He's great. He's been around for a long time. He was on um, All My Children he, years ago. And you know what? I finally, after all these years... Googled it on, on the YouTubeinator, and I saw some footage of him acting back in Very the day cool. with, with a yeah. full head of black hair. <laughs> He's still got a full head of hair. It's just silvery white. Yeah, well, that happens to some of us. <laughs> <laughs> he's the silver fox. He's yeah. married. He's got the young wife, younger <laughs> wife. <laughs> Michelle. He's yeah. a hair. He's, She's beautiful. She was actually the, uh, mm. the first actress I ever acted with. He just threw me into the deep. He said, oh, act right. with my wife. I said, you know. okay. <laughs> oh, man. It, it, somebody's got to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... How long you been in this game, this voice? I, I know that Jim is going to have so many awesome questions for you about this. Well, you know, as as far as how long I've been into it, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I was a ventriloquist. Wow. You know, so I started off creating voices for my dummies and uh, wow. eventually uh, traded in the dummy for a guitar because yeah. it worked out better on dates and uh, <laughs> you know, because yeah, those things can be oh, creepy. They're very rude. <laughs> rude. You know. Did you keep some? Of the, the puppets? No, no, they're all gone. But uh, Good. But there's another one coming. There's oh, really? One, yeah, it's on its way. Are you going to do like a one-man show or something? I, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, doing my uh, Mojo Friday videos with a little help from my friend. You know, so, wow. We'll see how that works out. I, I don't I don't know if that's going to increase viewership, but I, <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of people out there that, that are, that's right up there with like clowns. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I do that I thumbnail that. just right, they'll say, well, what is that? They yeah. might yeah. dive in and take a look. You right. Know? right. Well, the first thing I noticed about you and just kind of like observing your business, you're such a sweet man. You came over and you gave me a pen and a stylus, Always which is branding. completely branded. Oh, there's and, more coming. And you have brochures. <laughs> like... You have a, you have the, you know, cause you teach voice acting. So you have this thing called the booth camp and then you have a brochure for your band the and your website group. is great. Yes. And you. you're, and then you have several websites, one for your, your, your actually to hire you to do your, what you do and one for all your educational right stuff. And what are those? Tell the audience what those are. Well, joelesh.com mm -hmm. is my coaching site. Right. And the, the all American voice.com is the one I use to pitch my voice for, um, right. for jobs. Right. 
And so I, I, I have a demo. I did one in 2015 with my friend Eric Stewart. So I was like going through my divorce and I immediately wanted to start doing the things that I had always wanted to do, which included getting some voice acting training. And uh, I, you know, uh, maybe we can put a, we could put a little bit on there or something, but it's my, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, it's holding up. Yeah, yeah. You're getting ready to update yours probably with Joe, right? I did. Uh, I did one about a year ago. And it's not bad. Yeah. Well, the pressure's on now, so he'll be in to see me. Yeah. I know. I know. The doctor, the voice doctor. Your stuff, actually, the all-American voice that just occurred to me, you describe the, the nature of your voice right there in the website, which is like what uh, uh, Mike Elsner, Michael Elsner was talking about, uh, m- metatag data, almost. Oh, metadata, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, basically, you, that's that's a brilliant approach. Oh, thank you. Instead yeah. of, most people do it from like, you know, I do Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com, mm-hmm. you went with the description. Yeah, the allamericanvoice.com. When yeah. you get there, it says, welcome to Joe Lesh, the allamericanvoice.com, yeah. not your average Joe. Right. And, so and, that and the thing way, is, you have the all-American voice, mm-hmm. you know? Right. You, so that's your lane is just the calms, a calm, soothing read. I, I believe that's that's my niche. Yeah. yeah. We have to have a niche. Otherwise, we we're just crazy and we're yeah, wild. We're otherwise, we're scratching itches. Yeah. Now, what was this website? VoiceOverExtra.com. Are you so associated with that? Uh, yes. Uh, well, VoiceOverExtra.com is the information leader in this industry. Mm-hmm. So if you want to know what's going on in VoiceOver, you would, could go there and subscribe to their emails. And also, uh, that's John Florian that runs that company. And so he also puts out my Mojo Friday videos. And those are tips and tricks for voice actors that come out on the first and third Friday of each month. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, with the popularity of audiobooks and uh, the people, you know, going to be sitting there and going to be logging a lot of time in front of their televisions, you know, around Turkey Day and Black Friday. And we are going to watch this constant loop of the same commercials six times an hour, every hour. Folks, someone's got to read the copy, and that's where Joe and Jim come in. I guess we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, for our listeners, like, describe the range of work that could be available to somebody that's interested in maybe opening the doors to a career in voiceover. Well, sure. I, I think that when most people get involved with voiceover, they have no idea what they want to do. They they only know that it sounds interesting, or they've been told that they have a good voice and they should do something with it. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so it could be commercials, narration, um, corporate narration, uh, perhaps uh, if they have a back a background in pharmaceutical, it might be a medical demo, right. audio book demo, if they have the stamina for doing uh, long form narration. Right. Mm-hmm. And when the, with the audio books, like I did my book, Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life on audible.com right. that my friend Eric Stewart produced. Um, thank you, Joe. And uh, so that is uh, what you would describe as nonfiction. But then if, if you get into fiction, sure. Are you voicing the characters for like a children's book? Is that is uh, certainly, yeah. yeah you really. may you may wind up being all the voices uh, for all the characters plus the narration. Now I produce all of Dave Ramsey's audio. Okay, and so I produce all of his audio books. So his people come in and they narrate the books that they wrote. Right. But Dave has a series called Junior's Adventures. Right. And so that's teaching kids at a very young age on how to. Uh, properly manage money throughout life that's smart and i wish i would have had that when me I was a kid. too yeah but in those <laughs> i'm drinking a 17 dollar latte <laughs> right now <laughs> uh but in those books uh there's several characters and narration and so i'm all of the character voices and all of the narration for junior's adventure now that sounds like um I'm sure you have a super, super high level skill where you can just do it in real time. But is that, what's the process for that? Do you do do each character and then insert the other characters or do you switch back and forth? Well, in the first six books that I did for him, uh, this was uh, the carnival. Uh, mm-hmm. So in that first book, I did all the vo- voices in order. But I thought there's got to be an easier way. So right. I used, uh, I was using Pro Tools at the time. Sure. And uh, so I would put each character on an individual track. Smart. And so I would ask all the questions and answer all the questions. And since I was doing that, I knew how they should be answered. And so I would stay in character for all of the that particular character's lines. I love that. And then you essentially you comp the book. Like, in, like if, you, if I was producing a, a chick singer... We would do multiple takes, and then we mm-hmm. and they would all be their separate track, and then we would comp the vocal yeah, with yeah. the best. So that's what you do, right? You, 
That's and that's time, it's time consuming. It is. So you have to charge appropriately. It, I'm it, assuming it is time consuming, but also it, it's great fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because every one of those characters has a, a different attitude, mm-hmm. and so when I'm teaching character voice, um, well, teaching people how to do that type of thing, I say, look, go for the attitude first. What's the attitude of that character? Because mm-hmm. the attitude will bring the character to the, the, to the game. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have to run that past? So, so you 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 have the meeting with Dave, and you're like, "Hey, for this character, I'm thinking it's more like this." And then, you know, I've never had a meeting with Dave, for, right? For this, you it's, talk to his people. His people. Dave, <laughs> yeah. Dave has people, right? He's got people on top of people, right? right. <laughs> Multiple layers of people. And isn't he the guy that keeps all Dave. of his lights on in that building twenty four seven? Okay, yeah. did, am I yeah. not the only one who notices that? That's a big bill. Yeah, I'm not, I know they're all LED lighting. Yeah, but I mean, it still adds up. And then I learned something else about you. <laughs> you were the you did all the uh, thunder rolling. I did on the Garth yes. Brooks song. I am thunder I rolls. am the thunder and the lightning <clears throat> and the rain. How did that come about? Relationships, I'm assuming. Uh, well, yes. Uh, you know, I worked for Loretta Lynn for a number of years. I was in the uh, music business, and uh, the uh, Mark Miller. Uh, he was uh, sorry, Brown. No, different Mark Miller. Okay, different Mark Miller. This was Mark Miller, the songwriter, yeah. publisher from Jack's Tracks. Okay. And so uh, he was working for Alan Reynolds at the time. And he had heard about me through a friend of mine that I was um, pretty proficient with uh, sound effects, that type mm-hmm. of thing, special effects. And I'd done some um, uh, movie work in the previously uh, as far as uh, like back, f- backgrounds. Like Foley? Foley yeah, yeah, Foley work. And was it using libraries and choose, or just well, creating the sounds? I had a library that I built the initial uh, thunder on. Yeah. But then I, uh, we had a huge thunderstorm in Nashville about that time, and I, I recorded it out back on my back porch, right right down the street. Smart, right here. That's really Ten smart. houses away have from you, so Have you lived in this neighborhood since it was built in 92? I moved in in 92. Wow. So I'm He's, one of the original... Good for you. Original folks here. Are you active in the uh, homeowners association? <laughs> Not too, because they generally have their meetings when I'm out of town. They always do it on purpose because they, they know there's a lot of musicians here. And like, yeah. how are we supposed to do this on a Saturday afternoon? I, I'm in. I, I I'm in know. Des Moines. Yeah, I, I might be in uh, Tucumcari, New Mexico. I don't. I don't know. I've been there. Yeah. Well, they're doing an okay job other than that little park where they put up the little Damien fence. And so when the kids swing on the swings and they fall off, they're going to impale themselves. Uh, well, not that it hasn't been done before. Have you seen that when you drive I always in? talk about going down tangents, but this is not what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So back to your thunder. thunder. Oh, really? I was, I was, we were just about to get to the gazebo. The omen. Jeez. Well, almost got to the gazebo, yeah. and there it's gone. <laughs> Did they take the, the gazebo down? No, it's still there. Okay, good. Okay. But we digress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were talking about thunder rolling. Oh, thunder. <laughs> thunder rolls, yeah. yes. Because drummers you know, have uh, thunder sheets. We can. We have this thing called a thunder <laughs> sheet. It's like that, a that's true. <sighs> it's kind of, well, you know, I was using, uh, gosh, this was back in 91, 92. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it was at the beginning stages of uh, digital, switching from analog to digital, because everything I'd done up until that point was all razor blade editing, you know. Right. And so digital comes along. So that was a big help, because, mm-hmm. but it was all digital tape, yeah. like the ADATs and mm-hmm. that. Yeah. It was, it was a, a challenge. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Thunder Rolls has held up all these years, and still when, when Garth per, per, uh, performs live, uh, he's still using my Using effects. that track. Mm-hmm. And that's an actual thunderclap. Yes, yes, that it you is. recorded on your back porch. Mm-hmm. It's uh, there's a couple of thunderclaps are, that are happening at the same time, and I was very careful to tune it into the key of uh, I think it was D minor. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Really? So that so that when the instruments would come in, it would just kind of blend in together. Mm-hmm. That's really smart. And so uh, it was about a month ago. Garth put out a new commercial for Amazon. Mm-hmm. Because they're, the Amazon Prime is going to be selling his music, Smart. and he put out this thing about his his uh, his whole feeling about the thunder on the thunder rolls. Yeah. It was about my work. And That's I, great. I, somebody, a friend of mine, one of my students, uh, she sent this uh, to me. She sent me the link, and I went and watched it. And I, I was really 
touched, almost emotional about how Garth was describing all of the Yeah, he said effects. the thunder is in tune with the track. Yeah. I saw the video. Good yeah, for you. When he said that, I said, you know, that's intentional, Garth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, what's really funny is I think that he has a reputation for being the kind of person that thinks everyone around him because without the entire web of life of everybody in their lane and the job to pull it all together, they're there isn't a Garth that flies over the crowd. And I think, I think he recognizes that. We, um, last CRS, I think it's not this March, but the March before, I got to back he and Al Dean up on like three or four songs. And then after the, um, I saw him in the hallways and he goes, he high five me and he said, Phew, that's a monstrous band. From you know, so he loved our band. It was cool. a really Very cool thing. Cool. So he always yeah. thanks her. He's just a nice guy. He he's a wonderful yeah. guy. He's down to earth. He's he he would sit down and have a conversation with anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to love people like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You deserve your success for sure. Wow. So that's um, that's really good. So you you were in the you're in the music business. You're still in the music business. Tell us about your band. Well, we're the road crew. Yeah. We're the official musical ambassadors to Route 66. So who are the guys in the band and what, why that angle? Uh, Woody Bomar, Don, yeah. Don King, Jason Harmon, and myself. Nice. And uh, Woody and I served in Vietnam together. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you for thanking me. You came back. I appreciate that. That's good. So uh, Woody and I met in Vietnam. So we've been playing music off and on together for all these years. And the, the band has been, this particular foursome has been together for almost 13 years now. That's great. Wow. And uh, really great guys. It's it's so much fun to play with these guys. And we just played Saturday night at Puckett's and Leaper's Fork. Yeah, it's a cute venue. I love that in the band. I do too. It's a little step back in time. It know, is. And it seems to be just right for us. Yeah. Because even when we're on 66, it could be a uh, mom and pop's cafe, a, a diner, uh, under someone's neon uh, mm -hmm. it's it's just magical to so that's the angle 66 that you do you play any any venue along 66 <laughs> we play for international route 66 festivals car shows motorcycle shows uh yeah different that's kinds awesome. of events in different towns along route 66 and you know what rich what you slap us the bass oh you play a little bass too oh yeah that's i play awesome. bass with the band and yeah. also some mando all right. Slap at the or, bass. Yeah, like um, like Paul Rudd in our favorite movie. Like, like Paul Rudd and... Uh, Love and, you, man. And David Santos. And Dave Santos. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever worked with Dave Santos? No, I haven't. On, cause you play guitar too, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, uh, that, 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 he's, a, he's a bass player we had on. You got to listen to that episode. It's okay. hilarious. Okay. Yeah. I'll go back. I'll For check those of you out. who are listening, you should check that. I think it's like <laughs> episode 11 or something. <laughs> and so for the folks that want a little bit of... Um, training i really enjoyed um you know a lot of your you have a mojo friday tell everyone about that uh yeah mojo friday it's the tips and tricks for voice actors right. that that's uh put out by voiceoverextra.com mm -hmm. it's uh and my youtube channel let's go ahead and get that plug in it all of course that's why we're here youtube.com slash vo booth b-o-o-t-h mm -hmm. camp vo booth camp, booth camp. right no. Yeah, and it's nice. I like the take here. You've got the that's Rosie, isn't that Rosie? That is Rosie the Riveter. Rosie the Riveter, mm -hmm. um, and she's got a microphone in her hand. That's true. Very smart. Joe is very big on education, much like the School of Rock is very big on education. <laughs> Joe, are you familiar with the School of Rock in Nashville? <laughs> I, I am familiar with it. Yes. Yeah, Angie and Kelly McCrite. They're this amazing family. They're such big believers in music education, and they are the official sponsor of the Rich Redmond Show. Thank you. And we are very, very appreciative. I've known these folks for God six seven years they have a big event coming up january 5th at the ryman auditorium it's a big benefit i'm going to be the your mc and host at that event i'm probably going to play a little bit of drums um but i just know that uh, children playing musical instruments they grow up healthier they grow up happier they have better life skills they have better self-esteem and then at the end of the day if they come out being drummers or bass players or guitar players or great singers or keyboard players they have that skill that they can take with them for the rest of their lives. So if anybody's interested in signing their kids up for music lessons, one-on-one -on -one music lessons, lessons and group music lessons, they can reach out to schoolrock.com and the emails Nashville at schoolrock.com or Franklin at schoolrock.com. So we love the folks at School of Rock. There's 250 locations in the United States. There's 80,000 students and some of the best students and some of the best teachers are right here in Music City. Absolutely. 
We love them. Thank you, School of Rock. Check out schoolofrock.com, Nashville at schoolofrock.com, and Franklin at schoolofrock.com to answer all of your questions and get your kids signed up. Drop them off. Mom and dad, you'll have a free hour. You can go to the mall. We'll take care of your kids. That's right. <laughs> you know what's funny? There are people in radio that can't do a live read the way he just did. <laughs> that's and very that's, cool. That's, that's Thanks, true. I thought, man, where's all this coming I've from? I've got I a know. future in radio. You do. <laughs> Well, let's hope not. <laughs> let's, let's keep doing this. Because Jason Aldean would have a new drummer, and they'd be like, why is that guy, you have a face for radio. That's not what they say. Now, what's the deal with the e-books? I just scoured your life, Joe. I was stalking you last night. I don't know if you could feel it. Mm-hmm. I was stalking away at about midnight. Your e-books, um, the, on po- positively speaking, on breaking the crap procrastination cycle, on uh, Instagram marketing secrets, um, secrets of public speaking, uh, breaking bad habits, and overcoming anxiety. So I'm assuming these are pretty quick reads, just your take on these yes, subjects? Re- yeah, very quick reads, except for uh, The Power of Positive Speaking. Now, I just finished that book about a month or so ago. Oh, really? oh you mean, the, uh, is it positive speaking or public speaking? Well, it was uh, The Power of Positive oh, Speaking. Positive mm-hmm. speaking. Is what the working title was. Right. Now, it's just simply called Positively Speaking. Okay. And it's based on the principles of Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's a lot of uh, positive uh, reinforcement there. Because, mm-hmm. see, a lot of people will start with uh, voiceover, and within a year, they'll be out of it. Right. Because they've lost their focus. They've lost their way. Mm-hmm. So this really helps people to stay on target. You know, so while you're building your voiceover business, and generally it takes about five years really to build a solid business, because you have to be in front of people numerous times before mm-hmm. they'll remember you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes a, a, a person's reputation or story has to be corroborated five to ten times yeah. before they'll truly trust you. So, true. so you're averaging five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's true for a music career as sure. well. Yeah. And so, I think the, for any the, business, yeah, yeah. Po- mm-hmm. positively speaking, helps you to stay focused while you're building your voiceover business, mm-hmm. so that you don't get lost along the way, and so that you can hang in there till you can start to reach some uh, some uh, moderation of. Uh, success you just seem like a super super happy person when you wake up in the morning and you and your and your feet touch the floor something tells me you've got a project waiting for you on pro tools you're ready to go you know i i'm a i'm a happy person i'm in a really good place right now my business is is doing well mm-hmm. you know I'm, I'm married to the most wonderful girl in the world is that Lori? yes it is that is Lori. she's your marketing director uh, no she's someone else's marketing director because <laughs> uh, that's where her money comes from okay you know? yeah but right. uh now she's my girl and she does help me out a lot with my marketing Right. Marketing is so important. I mean, I hadn't started really marketing myself as a coach until about 10 years ago. Yeah. But then you really went for it. It's good. Bam. Yeah. Is it? Now, how long, I was going to say how long you guys been married. We always bring that up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've been married for, uh, we just celebrated our 31st wedding That's anniversary. great. That's worth yeah. some applause. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. Did you did you guys go to a nice uh, rooftop bar that's like, you know, these things are poking poking up all over Nashville, popping up. Do we go there? Oh, for our anniversary? Yeah, well, yeah. what do you do for a 31st wedding anniversary? Do you go to the Hermitage Hotel? You know, we probably stayed home and watched a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Netflixed and chilled. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a night out for us. Yeah. And we, we just love to, you know, sit and cuddle and yeah, watch I movies. And we got married in Hawaii. Yeah. That is great. Kids? No uh, kids? We have one son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in St. Louis, two granddaughters. Oh, all cool. right. Right on. You know, what's funny is that you talk about the characters before. Yeah. And were you talking about doing the characters one at a time? Because mm-hmm. I think that I've seen videos of like Seth um, McFarlane, who's uh, the family, family guy. Family guy. Yeah. And when he does all the voices for that, he does them one at a time and responds as the characters. I guess they play it back and he responds as individual characters and stuff. A lot easier to do when you're working with a production that big. But Yeah. You know. I, would but, say I, mean, th- I, I would imagine it helps you keep in character you know i uh i was producing music a soundtrack for uh, a series of cartoons that were going to be on the disney channel Mm -hmm. and bobby goldsboro uh, huge country artist back in the late 60s early 70s and so some several years later this was uh 1990s in the 90s bobby was uh he's still popular overseas 
but he's not so much in the United States, but he started writing these scripts for the Disney Channel. Hmm. So we were working on Stinger, King of the Bees. And uh, earlier that day, I had recorded a number of different talent, and we were working on the music. And about 11 o'clock at night, Bobby says, uh, you know that evangelistic praying mantis that was in here didn't give me at all what I was looking for. Hmm. Where am I going to find an evangelistic praying mantis at this hour? <laughs> and I said... Yale, the Reverend Mantis, at your service. Nice. And he nice. said, great, get in there and do that. I love that. Wow. Oh, he just went right into character. Yeah, man, that audience is <laughs> right it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive audience. And yeah. so the, oh, an evangelistic praying mantis. Yeah. I could picture yes. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really can. It's tall podium. That's that's the one thing about voiceover is that you know a lot of people say, well, hey, you do a great impression. But the key of a good impression, if you can really carry it forward, is is talking about anything in character. Mm-hmm. It's the toughest thing to That's do. Right. The key to a good impression is a bad impressionist. Because <laughs> see, if you're trying to to, uh, to do someone, you know, yeah. let's say I'm going to do uh, Rodney. I do a terrible Rodney Saul. Uh, Rodney, I almost said my my friend Rodney Saul. Dangerfield, I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I meant uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, but you can take that attitude. If, if you don't do him well, mm-hmm. you don't do him right on, then you're not in a copyright infringement. You're actually doing somebody else. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. I got a million of them, you know. Yeah. The other night I was looking out the window, got arrested for mooning. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> but, but, but see, I can I can take this guy and I can use him somewhere. You, you know, can take the essence. Because he doesn't sound that much like him. Yeah. Like if you had to pull off a character, you know, and you're doing mm-hmm. a lot of acting, Rich. Mm-hmm. Um you know, a lot of acting is is getting in the mindset of that character, like you talked about, bringing that attitude, mm-hmm. getting the attitude of the character, and the character will come forward. It makes so much sense. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I've I've done a commercial once where I had to imitate uh, floors. I had to be like a wooden floor and a carpeted floor, and I was like, <laughs> I literally, my, the wooden floor was yeah. like, you know, oh my gosh, my tongues and grooves are killing me. You yeah, know, that's, that, that's so smart. It was just kind of this guy that talks like this all the time. And it was the carpet like a female, <laughs> soft and plush, and round, and <laughs> but curves, yet, but yet so firm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's you know, but that came from people I grew up with that I always imitated my, you know, I, I had a lot of people around me from New York and New Jersey and, you know, I can, you know, I can get into the, let me tell you something here, you know, talk sure. to people like that. All right. Hey, your mom talks uh, like that. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and it's kind of a hybrid of her and yeah. a bunch of other people. You know? so, yeah. I'm not much of an impressionist. Um, I'm, characters I'm, I'm, I know I'm just trying to be more of a, uh, like um, the best version of myself possible that I can present you know, bring that essence to somebody. Because like I said, I, you know, I told Alan when I was studying with our friend Alan Dysert um, <clears throat> as an actor, yeah, I said, I'm going to be hired to to play very close versions of myself, you know, <laughs> almost like a host or a, I play the, I'll be the music teacher. I'll be the, the douchey friend. I'll be the funny husband. You know, sometimes you'll see actors on TV and, and they're very much like they were in the last thing that you saw them yeah, in. Yeah, the good ones. Say, well, and my, my wife will say something, well, they're just being themselves. Yeah. I said, do you know how hard it is to just be yourself on camera? Yeah. You know, that's what I'm extremely. trying to do. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's Pacino, that's De Niro, that's Paul Rudd. That's, sure. you know, they play themselves in every movie. Mm-hmm. But know? they're fully present and reacting to the other actor and, and, mm-hmm. and losing themselves in that thing. And that's what I'm trying to master. Yes. In the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That pretend. You're trying to pretend in the moment and go to that special place and connect with the other person while a bunch of people are tapping their foot going, I'm ready for lunch. Yeah, you know, and then trying to do that with, uh, you know, being in a studio, a recording studio, with just copy in front of you, and trying to see it in your mind. Certainly, that's yeah. uh, that's the trick of voiceover. Well, you've you know? got you've got this interesting copy right here. This is a ripped right off. Uh, speaking of, um, I wrote it. Oh, you wrote this because I because this comes out. Now. This looks like something that I hear every holiday season, like the season of. Uh, uh, the season of Mercedes Benz. That's right. That's right. It's the holiday dream event at Mercedes Benz of Music City. Believe mm. it or not, happening right now. Did you read this? 
I did. I actually did. I did this commercial. You it's created the only piece of copy I could come up with. So j- should we, Joe, do you want to look at it? What would you yeah. do with this? You can critique it too. So what, what's your usually first step when you get the copy? Do you read it in your mind just to get the flow? Well, you know, first of all, you want to interpret the copy. So you say, uh, what is the message here? Who's my audience? Okay. Who am I talking to? And really we, rich people. Obviously, we're not looking at uh, little kids or teaching kids to play the drums, okay, so right? Who, who's who's <laughs> so the audience? We're talking to their their parents, okay, who have the money for you to teach their kids to play the drums. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, the holiday the holiday dream event at Mercedes Benz of Music City. You know, so if you were to say because we want Music City to shine too, because we're talking about Nashville here, yeah. yeah. So it the for example the holiday dream event okay the holiday dream event mm-hmm. you know so see there's one two three four words mm-hmm. but there's one thought you know so someone might say the holiday dream event you know mm-hmm. you know that's the how ho- that's like all scattered too mm-hmm. musical this is just the holiday the dream, dream event you know no the holiday dream event mm-hmm. you know, so that becomes one thought. Mm. See, I wrote the copy, and I always hear, because of Mercedes, I always hear John Hamm in my mind, because he's, I think he's still the voice of Mercedes. Mm-hmm. You know, and the first line is, it happens once a year. You know, the holiday dream event at Mercedes Benz of Music City. You know, something like that. Yeah, uh, look at the two different uh, takes on that. You know, and I just, a lot of it had to do with just the timbre of your voice. Right. That's true. You know? Mm-hmm. Yours was more soothing and conversational. His was more gut wrenching and upsetting. No, no, it's <laughs> it's, it's more uh, it's like uh, monster trucks. Well, it's, it's, but not I, I, not I as bad hear, as monster trucks. That, well, that'd be like it happens once a year. That kind of thing. Yeah, that's is, scary. Yeah, Bruce yeah. Bennett Nissan, winner of the coveted Best of the Best Gold Laurel Award. I had to read that line about eight times. Gold Laurel Award. Mm-hmm. That's a cork mm-hmm. line. Yeah, that is a cork line. And you, yeah. you guys circle, and then you circle your traps. You know your tongue twisters. Well, generally, if it's on paper, I'll I'll use a highlighter, and I mm-hmm. have different highlighter colors for different things. If I if this needs to sound really cool, I'll highlight it in blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but cool, I mean, blue, cool. I like that. He's mm-hmm. got a Joe's got a trick, which where, that he taught me that best gold laurel award. That's a tough set of words to say. Uh-huh. And I've already got a speech impediment, believe it or not, with L's that I've had to overcome early on. Um, so he said, you know, if you have like my the, the word that's the bane of my existence and a lot of voice actors existence is regularly. It's a tough word to say regularly. So you could say it's fine. Mm-hmm. For me, it's it's a nightmare. Um, and, well, and first, says, you have to be regular. Right. And then get, <laughs> and then get regularly. Yeah. <laughs> But he said, he gave me a cork and he said, stick this cork between your teeth and say the words over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And eventually once you take the cork out, bam. Yeah. Man, what a little trick. I uh-huh. <laughs> that, was worth, that, was, that was worth the price of admission yeah. right there. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Like, I would, uh, I would um, do a lot better than to put the cork in my mouth than the bottle of wine. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably a good trick. <laughs> You're the guy we come to when we need the cork. <laughs> God, I've got them. I got a <laughs> massive collection of them. Uh, best Gold Laurel Award. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, Best of the Best Gold Laurel Award. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of Pro Tools. You know, it's you can go back. <laughs> you know, well, the key is to get it done in one take. It is nice. Perfect time. Um, disclosure. Yeah. This clo- the uh, disclaimer. Oh, that and that's got to that's got to fly by faster. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. Disclaimers. I typically. Um, I would always save 12% off MSRP from when it was new. Now, stock number, blah, 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 blah. Pre-owned up 2019, all prices plus tax, I don't license. See dealer for details. Mm-hmm. And so then you, I speed that up. Then you speed that up. Yeah. yeah. That's a good trick. Yeah, I had one I had to get in eight seconds, but I couldn't do it faster than 10. Yeah. And so I sped it up for like two seconds. But still, Sometimes it has to. to be enunciated clearly so yeah. you can still understand it when you speed it up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's typically why you put the that, 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 um, that effect on it. Which yeah. is the uh, the filter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah the change it up, make it sound different from the uh, commercial yep. itself. And then the tagline, 
Big hearted team, extraordinary culture, and buying and a and a buying experience you deserve. Big hearted team, extraordinary culture, and a buying experience you deserve. Yeah. Big hearted team, extraordinary culture, and a buying experience you deserve. Nice. Oh my God, I was like rumbling my loins. <laughs> or you could do it like uh, uh, the. Uh evangelistic praying mantis <laughs> big hearted team <laughs> oh, yeah tea yeah you and very nice it's a big hearted team extraordinary culture yeah and the buying experience you deserve <laughs> that's my uh Split james gandolfini up. you know it depends on what the client's looking for too because yeah. if they want soft uh everyday guy you know then they might go to me, if they want uh, uh, a little, a deeper voice, harder sell. Yeah, I go to Jim. On a good day, I can do that. You know, that's it's not every day that my voice actually cooperates. And I have a TV hosting teacher, um, Shannon O'Dowd, in Los Angeles, and she's the girl that has done everything from like the Ron Popeil pasta, you know, infomercial thing to live hosting at events, uh, car events, and then she's been brand a brand ambassador, and and so she's done every type of on camera hosting. You, and she's like, Rich, you've got the hard sell down. I mean, you could be the Shamwa guy. She goes, I really want you to work more on your soft sell, and so we work on that worked out. So she says, bring a product in. So I brought a, I brought a. a a, a stick bag that I use. It's like an American made product. It's, it's, it's got very thin leather. It's had, a, I knew all the features and, and I did it for her. She says, tell it, tell me about like five or six features of this product into the camera. No script. Great. I did it. She goes, still a little hard sale. How about just be a little bit more conversational and make it about you look at, you can do it. Hangs. It hangs on the floor, Tom, for you. It's got two pockets that you can put your business cards and drum keys in. People are going to say, wow, I love the color. I love the, the quality. So I'm, it's being able to do those in the moment. Give me a hard sell. Give me a saw. Give me a hey neighbor. It's so interesting. And the only way to really do it is just to do it all the time. The, the, ca the casual read is a tough one. That's a tough one for you. Yeah. Yeah. For me, because I mean, I've been so trained to speak like this for you know, over 20 years mm -hmm. that my voice naturally conversationally comes out with force. Yeah. You know, like I'm like, I've got a microphone. Or whatever. So Joe, for your demos that you're creating with your clients, my, my demo had like a, a, a faux McDonald's commercial, a faux target commercial. It had a, um, energizer battery commercial. It had a read with a, an actress. So we were, we could go frick and frack. And then it had a disclaimer, like a super fast disclaimer okay. that that's covering a lot of bases. Is that something that you would do on your, what, yes. what are the things that you would yeah. have? Um, well, first of all, I'll explain to my students that if we're working on a commercial, demo mm -hmm. that they need to have uh, several different kinds of feels and so let's say on the low end we're talking about the cancer research center so we need to have something that's compassionate and heartfelt yeah. okay you know? and then on the top end we're talking about taking your family to holiday world yeah you know so that's going to be the top end mm -hmm. then we need to fill everything else which in uh, uh advertising terms will be we need to fill the donut right mm -hmm. and so in the middle we might have something from real estate or maybe a hometown bank mm -hmm. you know that's compassionate and it's sincere mm -hmm. but it's bringing more customers in yeah. it's cracker barrel sure yeah. could be cracker barrel it's like cracker uh, barrel maybe read. something in the middle if we're talking to a female we might be looking for something from a, a soccer mom you know mm -hmm. okay you're you're out there you're busy with uh getting the kids here and getting them there but you know your your family safety is riding on firestone so something that's kind of in between that middle and upper end yeah. so we want to capture a lot of different feels in this demo that's great. Because, see, the clients are going to, uh, a prospective buyer is going to go and look and say, for example. How long should each read be so we, we, our attention spans are not there anymore? Well, uh, that would be a one-minute demo, and it would be about six different pieces, and they're all 10 seconds each. Wow. Mm. Mine's too long. Yeah. How long okay. Probably two minutes. Well, you probably you probably did it a long time ago. I did it, yeah, th uh, three years ago. And it was too long three years ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we could shorten that. But, see, you could probably go in and edit that and still use bits sure. and pieces from it. For and sure. if there's any emotions that are missing from it, you could add to it. Yeah. Hey, Booth Camp, if you're in, I'm in. I'm going to do it with you. Yeah. Well, uh, talk to us about your programs, Joe. Like uh, Booth Camp. Yeah, Booth Camp is an all-day uh, workshop from 9.30 to 4.30 on a Saturday. Beautiful. Uh, booked by Alan Dysart. I love it. Cool. And, uh, 
It's a, in, how do you get to all those people? To, how does that work? Well, Booth Camp is a commercial and narration voiceover uh, <clears throat> workshop. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be my character voice development workshop. Nice. So that's creating characters. Uh, and all the, all of those little animals that you see in the pictures, those people had to come up with uh, voices for those characters. That's cute. I recognize a lot of those faces from my acting classes. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And then, would, and then w uh, if I wanted to make a demo with... If somebody wants to come and make a demo... Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What's that process? Well, it depends on what demo you're going to do. Uh, a one uh, one minute commercial demo or a two minute narration demo, mm -hmm. corporate narrations, uh, that type of thing. Uh, most see, I do a lot of corporate narrations for Boeing Aviation, a Chevrolet, um, Coca Cola, and most of my work for uh, That's like comes out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So is that like a like a like a like an industrial training video for their employees? Is that what your yes. corp corporate read? Okay, or in-house promotional type thing. Gotcha, perfect. I would probably. I don't have interest in doing the audiobooks outside of my own because I would have to attach myself. And and I know I was talking to somebody about the pay. It's like per page, and you have to start thinking about like the amount of time it takes to do the page. It's like, eh, I'd rather be a commercial guy. Well. Uh, yeah, if you don't have the the stamina or the, uh, uh, or you, if you can hang in there for a, a whole book, yeah, because the last book I did was uh, two hundred and sixty five thousand words. It came out to be a nine nine hour book. Mm. You get paid for the uh, finished hour, mm -hmm. as opposed to it. Can, you could can spend a lot of time working on a nine hour book. It took me thirty two hours to do a nine hour book. Right. Right? Because see, you've got to edit out all the bad stuff, leaving the good. You've got to finish off your files and make them um, ACX acceptable or mm -hmm. audible.com for Amazon. For they, sure. they have certain guidelines that you have to fit. You have to make sure the fi files fit into their format. Uh, I had their to submit format. three times. They were being super picky with mm -hmm. the highs and lows and then mm -hmm. making sure that it was the right calibration. Sure, and all that takes time. Yeah. You mm -hmm. don't get paid for it. You nope. just get paid for the finished hour. So you're you getting know? paid. It took you 32 hours to do a nine-hour book. They paid you for a nine-hour book. Uh, in that particular one, see, I, I had gone outside of ACX.com. Uh, the uh, publisher in San Diego called me and asked me to do that project. What would you charge us to do this project? And generally, I've been in this business for over 40 years. Sure. And so I, I do package pricing. I don't do the per hour type mm. thing. Yeah. So they offered me a sizable amount to to do the nine hour <laughs> audio book. So I was fortunate in the fact that I didn't get paid per finished hour. Yeah. That I just got a nice big package price. Well that that is um I think that's something that comes with time in the trenches. So you're talking four decades of experience. So so really when somebody hires you they're not paying you for the nine hours, they're paying you for the forty years. That's true. And I think that's something that comes along with time. We had a guest recently, Angela Prophet, that talked a lot about placing value on your time and your talent and doing it unapologetically. And I think that's something that is uh, a question I get all the time being an educator as for a drummer, what do I charge for a lesson? What do I charge per song? What do I charge for three hours in the studio? One day in the studio to go on a road trip. It's in a bus. It's in a van. It's in a, it's a fly. I, do I get hotels? Do I get per diem? It is, it is the wild west because there's no payment structures. Right. So you have to look at your skill set and look at yourself in the mirror and be able to, you know, hold your head up high and say, I am worth this. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. You know, I, you know, I was actually, I want to dig into your thoughts on the voiceover uh, uh, scenario and landscape that's been unfolding for the past 10, 20 years. But oh, with first, the hamburgers versus steak? Yeah, we, yeah. but first we need to, we need to take a break. Again? Yes. You got to pee. I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't let me stand in your way. <laughs> well, this is an amazing conversation, but we got to pay some bills and we'll be right back. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. 
you can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. All right, bills are paid. We are back and we're having our exciting conversation with Mr. Joel Lesh, joellesh.com. Joel, we were talking about um, the hamburger versus steak pricing and the old faction of, you know, my time and talent is worth this. And then the new folks that are popping up with a laptop on Fiverr.com surviving and thriving. How do we, what do we do? When someone's starting out in voiceover, uh, they don't have a lot of options on where those jobs are going to come from. Sure. Uh, if you've been in the business for years and years, most of it comes from uh, word of mouth. Uh, but if you're working with Voices.com, Voice123, VoicesUS.com, there's a number of different pay-to-play sites that you could get involved with and possibly get work from. Mm -hmm. But I always make sure that students realize that it's not just for the work that they might get when they're paying that $499 a year to mm -hmm. Voice123 or Voices.com. Mm -hmm. It's also the additional training that they're going to get. Because, see, they're still building up their skill levels. They're mm -hmm. still building up uh, everything they need to know about recording themselves. Because back in, when I start, got into this, it, it, you would go to a different studio to do all the projects. Yeah. Someone was there to direct you, and someone was there to make sure that the project came out the way they wanted to before you left the studio. Yeah. But today, you're recording yourself on your own home studio. And your own home studio might be just like what we've got right here. Right. You've got a laptop and a microphone. Mm -hmm. okay. But can you make it sound good in there? Is your, is your area quiet enough to be able to make it sound of quality? Sure. Yeah. And so it's not just a matter of, uh, of doing the performance, of, of, of being good with your, uh, your voiceover skills. It's also, are you good with uh, making it sound good? Recording you, it and, and editing yeah. and everything. There's a lot involved. So the first jobs that you're going to find may be off of Voices.com or Voice123 or Voices US. And I'll explain Voices US in a moment mm -hmm. because they're different than Voice123 and Voices.com. Uh, Those where you fill out your profile information, uh, the uh, algorithms are familiar with your voice on based on how you filled out the profile. And so they start to send you auditions and you'll get about 30 or 40 auditions a day. Based on the algorithm of your voice quality? On how you describe that your voice sounds. Ah. Yeah. And That's so crazy. you'll start getting these auditions and you might think, uh, I need to go in and, pro and uh, you know, take a, maybe edit my profile a little bit because I'm getting some um, auditions here that don't really fit me. Mm -hmm. But that's up to you. You've got to get that down to a science. Mm -hmm. But see, if, if you fill out those inform that information, the algorithms are what send you the auditions. Mm -hmm. Now with VoicesUS.com, you have to be approved before your voice over demo will be accepted there. Mm. And I like that because yeah. then you're dealing with other professionals. And if they contact you, it's because a person is out looking for work for you mm -hmm. and they've got you narrowed down. So if they say, I've submitted you for a job, that means you're up against two other people. You're not up against 40 or 50 other people that they've listened to on Voices or Voice 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. But you get a lot more frequency with the auditions that you get. On the other sites. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the auditions are where the practice happens. That, yeah, know? right. That's, I had the benefit of radio practicing every single day mm -hmm. with you know a, a multitude of different scripts. I yeah, mean, I've great. probably voiced and produced well over 10,000 pieces by now, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not many people, when I get asked that question, how do I get into this? I, I always say, you've got a phone, uh, start reading everything and, and recording it. Listening back. And listen back. Yeah. I, record, so, yeah. read, record, listen. Read, record, Some of listen. my auditions have been, um, it's the same for drumming. I tell everybody, like, how are you going to improve? Well, record yourself on audio and record yourself on video. The, I said you could do both of those on the iPhone, and there's built-in compression. It sounds pretty darn good. Then yeah. I bought a used GoPro, and I put a GoPro up behind me, four feet behind my head as I'm playing to, well, when I started doing it, it was you know, for 5,000 people. And now we play in front of 25,000 people. And what a great demo to have a, a, a camera looking behind you of your, the drummer's point of view and how you really sound in really in real life. 
some of my uh, uh, VO auditions that I got from acting sites like Actors Access in Los Angeles. Um, I've done stuff for like um, Hardee's, where it's like, the new Hardee's Thick Burger. Even <laughs> stuff where they wanted kind of like a, like a, what's his name? Sam Elliott, where they wanted a deep Southern, uh, Southern. I said, that's not really me, but I'm going to, I can go for the essence of the deep, you know. Grant, I did uh, Jack in the Box auditions, and it's fun. I never got the jobs, but it's so fun to do the read and send it in and just let tell people, "Hey, I just auditioned for, to be the new voice of Jack in the Box. That is cool. You're in yeah. the you're in the game." I put my name in the ring for the, the Affleck duck when Gilbert Gottfried blew up. Oh yeah, is he still the guy? No. Oh, okay. No. It literally, is me going Affleck. Over oh, so what do you mean he blew up? Did he have like a, a personal like a controversy? Like a Michael something. Richards type yeah, moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. He kind of blew up. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, that's, that was a great gig to have. Sure. That you know, was mailbox money. What are some of your, 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 what was your first big client that you were like, yes? Uh, Toyota. Yeah. Toyota. Toyota. But, but see, I was doing a lot of on-camera stuff uh, mm -hmm. back in the 80s and 90s. During the 90s, I was on-camera spokesperson for Philips Magnavox. Mm-hmm. And I had done a lot of uh, Folgers commercials. I did Sun Sweet Prunes with Barbara Mandrell. Nice. And, uh, gosh, I, I had a real good run for two or three years in a row with Toyota. Yeah. That was when Friar Squire, Squire, Friar, what, what was his name? Friedel, Squire Friedel. That's yeah. it. <laughs> okay. I can't remember. So he was the, uh, but I had a lot of, a lot of uh, on-camera time with those commercials. And that's what actually built my studio in my house. Was that the best part of waking <laughs> up as Folgers in your cup? Was it that era? Yeah, it was during that era. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Did you have to say that line a few times? Maybe a couple times. Just a couple. Yeah. <laughs> and then, what were some uh, what were some massive victories since then that you that you celebrate? Well, I think uh, you know. Okay, okay, here's here's one in particular. You know, the nine hour audio book that we were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my wife was working for uh, Guidepost Magazine, and uh, they had Ideals Publications, which was their children's division here in Nashville. And uh, Guidepost works out of uh, New York City. And so a book came up within a corporate meeting that they were having. And she was on this video conferencing with uh, about this. And, and one of their editors was Edward Grennan. And Edward had written a book about his drug and alcohol abuse and his road to recovery. Mm -hmm. And so they were talking about having uh, doing the book as an audio book. And someone said to my wife, you know, she, you should tell them about your husband. And so she said, well, my husband Joe does this. You know, you could talk to him about doing that. And so the uh, people in New York said, no, no, we need a big publisher. And mm -hmm. so, okay. And so uh, about three weeks later, I, get a, I, I gave him a quote, though. I gave him a quote. And uh, three weeks later, I got a call from a big publisher out of San Diego, California. It's, Joe, we got a project for you. We, it's called, uh, oh man, I can't remember the title right now, but it was Edward Grennan's book. And, and I said, yeah, sure, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And I made about uh, 2,000 more than the quote I gave him. Nice. And so Lori and I said, we got to be quiet about this until it's done. Mm -hmm. And so we were, and it came out, and it was the only book they ever, they ever did. They won an award. Wow, awesome. and so that was uh, uh, that was some kind of uh, gratification, and uh, also uh, it kind of came back to bite them a little bit. So <laughs> it was neat, though. But we kept our mouths shut until it was done. Right. Good, man, that's great. <laughs> I just got back from two sands. I was in San Diego, and I was in San Francisco, and it, you just can't beat the state of California. I mean, San Diego. That was. I was just like, why would people live anywhere else? It was so gorgeous. Because it's expensive. I know it's expensive, but yeah. you get what you pay for. You know, I, I grew up out there, and it was great growing up. There, oh my! Out there, God, yeah. it's so gorgeous. But I, I don't, I wouldn't live there for anything. You don't like, you don't like it now. <laughs> no. Was well, just the traffic? I mean, we have traffic it's, now. At least. No, no, it's not just not just the traffic. But when I when I grew up, I mean, you could go in a Seven Eleven and and get something. But today, uh, nobody speaks English in there, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mind the melting pot that is Los Angeles. I, I have a weird love affair with it. But I, I don't mind the melting pot. Yeah. It, it's crowded, though. It, it's overcrowded. Yeah. 
And uh, there was a big migration. The of homeless California. situation is. Yeah. I don't know what we're gonna. I really don't know what we're gonna do about that because it's just like caring for your fellow man. You're like, look at I. I understand that the economy is, and, and, you, and you lost your place, and you might as well stay here because the sun is shining. But uh, you can't go anywhere without an no. encampment. Yeah, you know, and true. then you worry about your safety and like. Sure. First thing I do when I started dating my beautiful, sexy new girlfriend, uh, Kara, is I bought her a. a um, Rape whistle and uh, and pepper spray, and she goes, "This is the sweetest thing any man has ever <laughs> done for me." And she goes, "I she goes, I wear it around my neck like a latchkey kid, kid." And but it just it's nice. It's like peace of mind because mm. it's like danger does lurk around every corner out yeah, there. Yeah, it's sad. It, it's different from when I grew up as yeah. a child. You know? yeah. yeah, it's different from Connecticut, I guess. We almost lived in California. Did you know that? Well, you have to be willing to travel f to where the radio takes you. No, no, no. I mean, my whole family, my when I was growing up. Oh, yeah. yeah it was they they had. Thought, I thought, thought, about I thought it. you were saying they were moving Connecticut to California. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, most of them, most of those people are coming down here. Well, we we went Connecticut to Texas. We were in Milford, Connecticut, and then we mm. went to El Paso, Texas, which was a massive cultural shock. And the good thing that came out of that was my my dad was gainfully employed going over and working in Juarez, Mexico every day, he ran the factories that made uh, Victoria's Secret's underwear. So I know the secret, if you want to know. And um, I got great training as a Texas drummer because there's so much great music education there. Everything really, really, happens for a reason. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. My, my band in the 70s was called Solid Gold, and we, we recorded for KTEL Records. KTEL! Solid, Solid Gold 50s, Solid Gold 60s. That's and we played down in uh, Texas quite a bit. Yeah. Down in McAllen. Yeah. Uh, Dallas, Texas Corpus people Christi. love live music. Oh, I love Texas. It is a fun place. People are like, I don't get it. Isn't it kind of bad? And I was like, no, nah, it's not backwards at all. It's hot. But the Tex-Mex, the food, mm. woo. Yeah. Yeah, I always enjoyed Texas when we visited there. And it is a conservative state it's outside of Austin. Uh, Tennessee is yeah. most of the Southeast. Yeah. Got that. Yeah. That is true. What else is coming up for you? Got anything exciting you want to tell the, our listeners? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're if someone's getting into voiceover and they have a you piqued their interest, what's right. the next steps for them? Do you think? You know, it's either to uh, contact Alan Dysert and book one of my workshops because he he keeps those pretty full. Yeah. yeah. With uh, whether it's um, introduction to voiceover, can we book for you? You can book your coaching sessions directly with me at joelesh.com. Okay. <laughs> But the boot camp, we want to go through Alan. Boot camp goes through Alan. And there's a pre-qualification process for that at all? or You know, I, I would much rather have somebody in boot camp who has done an intro class or had some kind of voice training or a voice over background yeah. to begin with. So I could do it. No, we could do yeah. it. Yeah, okay. yeah certainly. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but if you're brand new at it, you really need to have an intro class first. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got I to invest in myself. I think what I want to do, Jim, is I my my game plan is just to go and do a new demo. I think that we can do that. Joe's the man. Yeah, 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 guys. You, if you are interested in in exploring this career and thriving in it, make sure that you check out joelesh dot com. Excuse me, and that is L O E. S C H Joe Lesh dot com award winning voice actor and voice acting coach and musician. Be sure to check out his band, The Road Crew, America's Route sixty six band. Is there? Hey, oh yeah, here we go. Road Crew sixty six dot com. You got it. And we're neighbors. We're gonna have to get down and do something social. I've got a tenant here. His name is Phil Leone. Hey, he's a good Italian kid, and he is a great cook. And we have tried to have a couple barbecues. You know couple times a year he does the cooking and uh, I pay for the cleanup that'll be great I'll, I'll meet you down at the gazebo <laughs> yeah we'll meet you down at the gazebo with the uh, uh -huh. Damien Omen spiked fence which was a stupid move but that's okay Jim what do you have coming up man anything exciting uh you know just um trying to grind every day yeah you do you know, grind I need to uh, I've always I need to pick up I actually put it out on Twitter the other day I want to pick up um uh, three to five more regular voiceover clients just I've, I've been neglecting that side of hey this is what i want yes you know? so put it out there and ask and well, you've also I already got an email just now that requested my lexus read ask so. the universe for what you want and yeah. ask and you shall receive but you also yeah. are you know you've been very busy not only producing this podcast but about six others yeah pretty much you know a lot of podcast clients that's great that's what i do 
Podcasting so. is the future, and it is now. And guys, thanks so much always for supporting the book, Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life. It's available in physical, digital, and audio at Amazon.com and Audible.com. Of course, Joe's got some great books, some nice, easy reads. He's got five or six awesome eBooks, and you can find those at your website, also Amazon. JoeLesh.com. Amazon at all or no? Coming Not up. Not yet. Not yet. That's next. You got to get with Lori. Yeah, like yeah. she's got a honey do list. Director. She'll be home at five o'clock. <laughs> I well, love it. I got to go home. I got to get ready for Lori. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, thank you so much for all the support. Tell your friends the best way to you know to build any business, grow any business is we're relying on our friends and our true believers. And we have a Facebook group now. It's the Rich Redmond Show Facebook group. It was private. It's now public, and we're going to be launching all the video versions of that of the episodes on that page, and be we'll be distributing them, deploying, as Jim says, from that page. And as always, thanks for rating, reviewing, subscribing, and sharing. It does help, and we love doing this. And thank you to School of Rock, schoolofrock.com in Nashville and Franklin. And thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.